and welcome back to Bunter's Yard. Now today is a request for a chap called Tim who's just stumbled on this uh, old video of ours um, which we took on the iPhone. Anyway, you can watch the rest of that. The link's up top there. Um, so Tim has got um, got a number of Land Rovers on his, on his layout so I wanted to see how that was built. So we were going to do one anyway. So here it is. So it starts off with this um, this is just a donor sort of chassis. We're going to get rid of the body off this. Um, this is built on a on a little flat wagon on a little um, sort of low fit sort of thing, but they're quite hard to uh, come by as used, you know, for any any good price. So we, we're going to make our own. So we need a chassis. It's easier to um, sort of use one uh, from a donor rather than um, than print one on the resin printer. So uh, we're we're going to use this one um, and. I've got weights so I can fit this in um, but you know the Land Rover's got a little bit of weight behind it so maybe totally not necessary um, having said that I forget to put the weight in anyway so um, that's my excuse so the flatbed is a resin printed item so we print these here at the studio this is just um, got a bit of an old cast off it's got a little bit, bit of a bend in it but we'll straighten that out and um, we're going to use these tied allies as well so we can uh, tie some rope or a strap to hold the load in place. So um, without further ado, let's get cracking. So we need to pop the wheels out so we can paint the chassis anyway and we're going to get rid of those and use one that's already got that white rim around it because we're going to paint this yellow for our um, AA van, um, the white base looks nice on that, it works better with the yellow paint, so we'll use the white ones for this one. And then we need to give the chassis a coat of um, black primer just to consolidate everything. One of the bumpers was broken, so I'll just quickly swap that over it's just to make it all look uniform and you know, pretty clean. It's if it's an AA. Um, flatbed which is what we're looking to do they're going to um, you know be, be fairly respectable and they're not going to be dirty having said that it didn't exist anyway we we'll are just kind of making it up but there we go so you can need to look um, they look fairly nice so all in a uh, black primer uh, they're going to go all around this and this will also help um, take away that sort of plastic look a little bit and it will um, also allow us to uh, add a little bit of weathering powder. Now on the um, on the flatbed, we're going to paint this in a white primer rather than the, the black because the the yellow won't um, doesn't cover the black particularly well at all. So uh, with the white, we've got half a chance, and also the the wooden deck is going to be uh, wood tones. So uh, so the lighter shade will work just fine with that so it's just easy to do it in this white uh, now this um, flatbed by the way um, like I say they're, they're difficult to maybe difficult isn't the right word but you know there's they're, they're not they don't come up that often on eBay as far as I can see um, if you want to get these really shallow ones these sort of two planks you're looking at maybe the ones with the containers on and then losing the, con the container which seems a shame um, so this is just a simple resin print now if you've got a resin printer and you want to uh, to print any of these for your own uh, and you can resize it different sizes then the, uh, the the file the STL is in the post in the member section so if you're a member uh, of you know one of our our fans as it were and uh, you're all signed up then you've got access to the uh, membership area and you've got access to this file as well so you can uh, print as many as you like anyway um, so we sprayed this in uh, just one of the uh, sort of lighter wood tones from um, from the AK interactive kit we've used before I'm not going to put all the colors up on this particular one because it's uh, you know it, it depends on what you're modeling you you may want totally different colors so this is just just kind of a, a quick run through of how I've done it so um, these um, so there's these planks, we're just going to kind of um, put a sort of random um, sort of weathering pattern on them. We're not going to see a lot of this because obviously the Land Rover is going to be sitting on top of it in a minute. 
um, so we're just going to see around the edges but the planks will weather sort of differently from one to another and we're just going to add a few uh, little bits in here and there using the sort of darker tan color dirt one of the dark wood shades and then a gray one as well um, we've done a video on this before I'll put the link up uh, up the top and also in the description and you can watch me do this um, but I'll take a little bit more time and care um, on another one rather than uh, this particular one so I'm just doing this for kind of a bit of speed today because I just want to get this done because I haven't got much time this week to do uh, do much at all but I wanted to get this video um, posted for Tim to view Now when this dries up a little bit it won't um, look quite as sort of obvious some of the brush marks will fade it down a little bit and it'll be a little bit more subtle uh, hopefully so we're just trying to be random just to add some random marks onto the uh, to the planks um, you can use different colors um, white is always a, a nice little edge color and you may want to use a darker color for um, you know knots and you know where the screws have started to rust or um, oil stains if you if you're carrying vehicles that sort of thing entirely up to you you may just want to paint your dark brown or in a completely different color this is obviously going to be our AA um, uh, flatbed so we're going to uh, we're going to be painting this in yellow very shortly So next up we need to get this um, AA colour painted now when we think of AA I don't know about you but I think of yellow um, but this yellow you can see is a little bit different to the yellow on there and this one is this kind of gold yellow orange colour uh, is a lot closer so I think we're going to start with the gold yellow the game colour um, and we'll give it a little test we'll blow it over the white just on a piece of card and we'll hold it up against the Mm -hmm. still a bit bright so um, we're going to add some orange I've got some um, orange Vallejo air and that looks a little bit better so that's that's okay so just dropped uh, literally one or two drops of that orange in um, now I'm not marking this up I'm painting from very slightly below so that I don't get anything on the top of the wagon it just saves mask and just saves me a, a little bit of a job and we'll give that a couple of coats and that will be fine I think so once that's dried we'll glue the um, the flatbed on to the uh, onto the frame something like that now this uh, the particular flatbed was uh, one of a sort of reject print so there's there's a little imperfection that I didn't like with that one so uh, it's got a bit of a bend in it as well so I'm just gonna use these clips just to hold it flat just to strain it up a little bit and uh, we'll, uh, we'll get away with that okay that's all now set so next thing that we uh, we're gonna need to do is to fit these tie down eyes now we don't have to fit these you can tie it around the buffers a lot of people do that or just make the ropes or chain disappear underneath the uh, the, the wagon whatever you want to do well I've got these and I printed these um, on the resin printer and they can be quite useful but look, but look okay as far as I'm concerned and we can use uh, we can thread it with string rope or, uh, or we can use webbing today so if we have a look at these and I'll try and 
um, show you in a moment. Just need to clean these up to make sure they stick properly. It's just where they're made. It's just little bits at the bottom, just just so we can clean it. Uh, if you see there, this one's got a 45 degree angle, so we can um, uh, so the eyes sort of standing up, so we can put the the webbing or the whatever you're using to tie it down with uh, through there. And we're going to glue them on, I think, first of all. And uh, we'll just super glue them on. I've not painted these yet. We'll uh, we'll do them in situ, I think. And I tend not to put these right up to the very very edge. Leave a little gap around it. Depends on what we're doing, I suppose, and and the size of whatever is going in. But uh, I tend to. to keep them just away from the edge they're easier to threadle up then and we'll do the same all around now again uh, the uh, the STL the file for these if you want to uh, uh, download and print any of these is again in the post in the members section regarding this uh, this particular building you'll see it if you become a member and if you join us over there you can have uh, the files and um, access to all the files that are in there and print as many as you like entirely up to you there's absolutely no charge uh, if you're a member of the uh, Bunners Yard um, YouTube channel so I'm dry brushing these with silver you've seen me do that before on lots of other things uh, again you may want to dry brush it in in a rusty color or you know the color of the body whatever you want to do it's entirely up to you and I'm also going to dry brush the chassis it looks from the angle that I've actually just painted it silver but it isn't it's just really picking up the highlights I think it's just the light in the room has made it look that way but it's uh yes yeah, probably a little bit more subtle than it looks on camera I hope and I'll just do the top of those well just to catch those and now we're back to the wheels so as I say these are the white rim ones that we're going to use these are just uh, typical sort of Hornby ones and I just thought we looked nice on an AA wagon if uh, if they're yellow rimmed rather than just plain black or white rimmed, I'm just going to brush that in. Really, and that's it done. Just a single coat with that, and then the final bit that we're going to need to paint for this is just those hinges. I thought they'd look nice if they were black on an AA. You know, the the livery is black and yellow. Um, so I just want to pick out a bit of detail with this. Um, black Vallejo um, air paint so I've decided with this one we'll use uh, like these ratchet strap types of things and these are from scale model scenery um, I think I do a couple of different colours. I might do red as well. But anyway, we're using the blue one. I'm not sure if it's totally appropriate for the uh, sort of era of modelling, but um, there certainly were ratchet straps around when that um, vehicle would have been in production, I guess. Uh, but maybe this is a like a restored um, example or something going off to the museum, and they've used these modern, up-to-date blue ratchet straps. You can use uh, whatever you choose, um, chains or um, sort of rope or whatever. Um, or we can just paint the ratchet straps in a fawn tan sort of taupe colour. Um, might be more more in keeping. I'm going to leave them blue anyway on this particular one. So I've decided that the front will wrap around the bumpers and the back. I'm not totally sure at the moment we'll kind of see how it looks when that's in place and I find the easiest way to do these particular ratchet straps is just bend them in, in a little hooky shape and we'll thread it through there and then we're just going to super glue that join together to make a little loop so a bit of super glue there on uh, on the end of the cocktail stick. Try not to use too much of this, otherwise it. Um, so many times I've stuck my fingers to these. 
So with our tweezers, we're just going to pinch it together. And count to five. And that should hold it in place. Hopefully it's not stuck to the tweezers. Perfect. So for the uh, Land Rover, I always find it easy just to glue these axles in place. So we're going to stick this onto the um, flatbed anyway. But um, it just if the wheels don't rotate, it just sits a lot better. So we're just going to stick it in place. So we've glued the axles uh, solid and just a touch of super glue on the bottom of the wheels as well. So then we're going to stick that onto the flatbed. Only get one shot of this, obviously, so make sure you get it right. And that will set pretty quickly. So you can see we've done the rear ratchet strap. We'll, we'll deal with that in a second. Um, now I wanted to secure it from one side to another, like the front one, but it's not going to work that way. So I decided that um, it will probably go um, sort of over the axle. So we'll, we'll get it in the in the wheel arch. I think it will just pop up and go into place there. And it looks like it's then sort of tied onto the uh, to the rear axle. It just sort of disappears up into the um, into that wheel arch. So I'm just going to kind of fold that, curve it over, and it should just pop in. He says, hopefully. Try again. pop it into place and we'll just that's it with the, with the blade just pop it out and it just disappears behind I haven't glued that in place um, I think it'd be okay we don't need to glue that it's not actually yeah, serving any purpose it's not really holding it down um, it's just there for show and then this one we'll thread off from one side to another through the eye there and then we'll just tie that one off I think so it's a little bit long so let's cut it back So we'll loop it through first and then just tie it up in a knot. Hopefully. that and I could have done a little bit more tension in there but um, anyway touch of super glue on there just hold it together just so it doesn't come unraveled and then we're done let's fit the uh, fit the wheels back into place They're on the other side of the um, Land Rover you've seen. I've just uh, fitted all, oh, you can't see, but I have uh, done the same with that ratchet strap that goes through the eye and then over the wheel arch as well. So we're not doing much weather on this, uh, but I do like just a real touch of that really, really dark rust, but not too much down there um, on those axle boxes. It just looks like it's been uh, been working. We don't want it too pristine. That's never, never a good thing. Not from where I am anyway. Same on the other side. And then just a little bit on the top of the uh, those buffer mounts. That's it, we are done. Um, Tim, I hope this was useful for you. It'll give you an idea of uh, how we've done this. 
I'm sure you can do a better job than I can. But uh, yeah, good luck. Hope you enjoyed it. And we'll speak to you soon at Bunter's Yard. <laughs>